boys and girls, it is Miss Oates, and today we're going to be talking about making connections with a scientific text or ideas. So let's go ahead and get started by going over our I can statements for this video. So by the end of this video, you, I can describe the connection between ideas or concepts presented in a scientific text. I can explain how things work and why things change in a scientific text. And our focus standard for this video is RI 2.3, describe the connection between scientific ideas or concepts in a text. So let's go over some of our academic terms. So the first term we're going to be going over is science. So science is the study of how things work and why certain things happen in the real world. So if you think about us studying bats for the last couple of weeks, talking about states, talking about different animals, talking about um, why it's raining outside, all of those things are related to science, maybe doing a science experiment. One of these science experiments that we've been doing in Ms. Oates' class is we made bats fly. And the reason why bats fly was because we were rubbing our heads with those balloons and we were building up static electricity, which caused the bats to lift up. That is science. And we read a science-related text to that. All right. And oftentimes when we are reading scientific text, we are making connections. So a connection is to join or link together. When two or more things are connected, they are related in some sort of way. So for example, talking about how bats fly, we were able to make a connection to static electricity. So remember like when we said, if you were at Walmart and you were opening up the freezer door and you felt that zap, that was static electricity. And then oftentimes in a scientific text, they describe. And to describe is to tell what something is like or to explain something. So science is all about explaining something. So in our bat book, for example, Bats, Creatures of the Night, this book explains what bats do at night and whatever misconceptions there are about bats. Oftentimes in a science text, it often follows a sequence. So remember, the sequence is the order in, event in which events in a story or steps in a procedure take place. So what happens first, next, and last. And speaking of that, one of the things that we study in early grades, K through two, is we talk about life cycles. So today, we're going to be reading a text on the life cycle of a chicken. And after I'm done reading this text, I am actually going to sequence what happens first, what happens next, and what happens last by using some of the key details from the story. So let's go ahead and get started. So chicken life cycle. The life cycle of a chicken has five steps. The mother hen lays an egg. Inside this egg, there is a baby chick. It sit, she sits on the egg to keep it warm until it hatches. Once the egg hatches, the chick comes out slowly and dries itself off. The mother hen tends or takes care of the baby chick until the chick can take care of itself. If the chick is a hen, it will, when it grows up, it will lay an egg too. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the life cycle of a chicken, which has five steps. So in my summary of the story, I'm going to kind of put some of the steps together. So first, what I'm going to write is the first thing that the mother hen does is first, the mother hen lays an egg. So first, the mother hen lays an egg. Next, the mother hen sits on the egg until it hatches. All right, and then finally, the chick hatches from the egg.
and dries. itself off. Then the mom needs it. Perfect. All right, so let's go back through what I have read or what I wrote. It says, first, the mother hen lays an egg. Next, the mother hen sits on the egg until it hatches. Last, the chick hatches from the egg and dries itself off. Then the mom feeds it. So I, what I did was I read this story and then I sequenced again the steps of a chicken's life cycle. So what happened first, what happened next, what happened last. That is it for me, boys and girls. I will see you next time. Until then, happy reading. Bye.